Our next speaker tonight is Suzanne Boccolati. She's creative director of her own design agency called Boccolati. Um, she works with a range of cultural clients and she last year published and co-edited a journal called Trunk. Issue one was about hair. She's also currently writing and illustrating a fairy tale for future release. So um, this is where it all began. Many moons ago I went to see an astrologer and she told me that I should be a writer. I said I was a graphic designer. And she said my chart told her I should be a designer, a writer, an editor, a publisher. And that's all I could recall. So we move forward very quickly, 20, uh, like nearly 20 years later, and there's the GFC, um, which created the newfound fear um, of our generation that we haven't actually ever experienced before. We were forced to go into forest and we've become more afraid. Nothing grows well in the shadow of a big tree, Frank Cousy once said. <laughs> and for the GFC, the big tree, well, for some people quite uh, a scary place. Or as Dolly Parton once said, I've got little feet so nothing grows in the shade. <laughs> so I think people's, people actually stopped growing their feet. And the more fearful people became, the more they shrank and lived in a restricted and closed world. So no became kind of popular. Oh, sure. How's that? Oh, there you go. But I've always believed <laughs> to do what you're afraid of doing. To be truly creative is to be fearless. Uh, creativity is a space between negative and positive. You need both to be creative. I'll slow down in a minute. Um, so I decided um, to let the sun shine in and to do more things. I wanted to enter the forest and, and do all those other metaphors that we always talk about. So I spoke to Meredith Jones, who's a cultural theorist from U University of Technology, and said I wanted to publish something that actually encourages people to be creative. Um, and she said yes, so that kind of pleased me a great deal. Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> My first job was working in a, as a graphic designer in the University of New South Wales Library, and I'd sort of trawl around the bookshelves and find these great art journals dating back to the 19th century. I loved them so much, um, the poetry, the imagery, the tactility, the bound covers and the fine paper. And it reminded me of my childhood kind of exploration of Cole's picture funny books, uh, which were weird and wonderful but often scary as well. Um, I also became a huge fan of Cabinet Magazine. If you don't know it, you should check it out. Um, and, of course, McSweeney's, um, which is Dave Eggers, who everybody seems to want to marry, but he's already married, I'm afraid. Um, and we were interested in the cabinet of curiosities. So this idea of um, we wanted to create a conceptual kind of good writing um, that included poetry and art, something tactile and beautiful like a Bible uh, that would feel good in the hand, small enough for a private space. So we thought about a topic, a title for the, for the series, and we decided upon trunk because it's not any place to store treasures and hairy chests, but it also describes the middle of our bodies where our vital organs live and it separates and holds our body together. Uh, this made kind of sense to us. This is hard work, I tell you. That's the book, by the way. That's the gold version, if you're interested. The first edition, edition we thought should be about hair, which is both revered when on the head and reviled when it's not. Hair was the perfect beginning and allowed our submitters to provide some pretty weird stuff. Um, and as one of our, whoops, as one of our writers, Peter Hobbins, said, hair in hair is your symptom, he said, hair is the funny border between self and non-self. Unlike skin, it reaches out and intertwines the environment, each strand immersed in otherness. So work started trickling in, um, but we knew at that point that funding would be sort of tricky because we left it a bit late. So I funded the book myself. Um, we decided to print locally. Printing offshore was a cheaper option. It would have saved us thousands. Um, this is all images from the book. Um, but I just felt that I wanted to encourage local industry. Uh, and supplies were really tight when it came to sponsorship. So that was really tricky. We had a couple of sponsors. Um, Graham Maslin from Spitting Image helped us with pre-press and Print Point gave generously their, their time. I'm jumping ahead here. That's the Sydney Writers' Festival launch, if you're wondering. I still had to pay for paper. Um, we got a small discount from Spices, pretty small, 
but the binding was the stinker. That cost about $16 a book. Um, the binders in this country have printers by the short and curlies, so to speak, because there's not many of them. I'm going to slow down now because you can see all the pictures. No, that's fine. Thank you. We launched the Sydney Writers' Festival, which you saw a moment ago. Um, and thanks to Lisa Torrance, it was popular. We had to turn people away. This was great publicity for the book. Um, and the Writers' Festival gave us lots of openings for distribution. And booksellers have been incredibly embracing. I love that shot. That's an Iranian artist that submitted we gave a lot of books away, uh, but now books are sold in all good bookshops, including gallery shops in Europe and the US. And recently we were spotted in the new and noteworthy section of the MoMA bookshop in New York. We're distributed here by Modern Journal and ID Books in Europe and USA, and we're found on Amazon Books, which we just found out the other day. Would we do it again? Well, of course we will. Um, I, have a, I have learnt so much um, not to. I believe that creativity is um, a great way to get us out of these times and it gives hope to people. And it creates... Um, the opportunity to create a, a covetable classic is, is, has always been our aim. As Coco Chanel once said, innovation? One cannot be forever innovating. I want to create classics. And I suppose, you know, we want to create classics too. So to have faith is to trust yourself in the water. When you swim, you don't grab hold of the water because if you do, you will sink and drown. Instead, you relax and float. And this was said by Alan Watts, who's a, who's a maverick philosopher. And I think that this is true of any creative endeavour. Just do it and relax and float. And I think also people... And I've rich my time, but I'm going to keep going because I didn't have video. Um, <laughs> People are demanding from books as well. The more virtual we become, the more we desire the tactile and we demand more from our cutaneous selves. As humans, we love tactility and the sensual and books, I believe, won't end up the same way vinyl has to music. I think we'll still crave the sort of the, the personal space. Next time I'll have smaller notes, I promise. So just to let you know, the next volume is about blood and blood is the fluid living tissue uh, it's a complex mix of platelets and plasma. Uh, blood is the most profound symbol for our deepest human concerns, life, death, sex and love. And we're seeking writing and art that explores cultural, medical, geographical, historical, religious and social aspects of this abundant body fluid. So uh, for all you budding writers and artists out there, submissions must be accessible, curious, entertaining and stimulating. So firstly, I've got a couple of books here for sale if you're interested, but if you haven't got any cash, or don't want to give me cash tonight, go up on our website, which is trunkbooks.com, buy a book and submit some work. Thank you.